there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. The OEM integration category is certainly diverse and uh, has many different facets to it. And today, with the brand Rostra, we're going to show you a couple of avenues that you might not have thought of before. We're talking cameras, we're talking cruise control, but we've got the right man for the job with Bill Simmons in the studio with us today. This is CMA Connected, presented by SiriusXM, Rostra, and it starts now. What's going on, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to this CMA Connected presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And today we're rounding out our OEM integration sessions. We've brought you different ideas, concepts, and products from all different facets, including audio. Now we're talking a little bit about cruise control and cameras, which are super important when it comes to integrating into vehicles. Now that may be consumer vehicles as it may be fleet. So start thinking about that, guys. There's so much opportunity and potential when it comes to this category. And uh, our job here is to make sure we give you all that information to make the right choices for your shop. All right, without further ado, of course, we're talking about Rostra today, a company that has a rich history in OE manufacturing. It was acquired, of course, by Vox Electronics. And we have their marketing director with us today, Mr. Bill Simmons, let's invite him to the studio. What's going on, Bill? Hey, Ben, how are you? I'm doing really good. Thanks for joining us today. Um, sure. Would you agree with me in my statement that, you know, sometimes OEM integration, a lot of that term has certainly been used towards the audio side of the business, but make no mistake, there's plenty of opportunities integrating into factory systems through other avenues. Absolutely. There's a lot of extra accessories out there that a lot of install shops don't know about. So I'm hoping today through, uh, through our presentation, we can give a little, little update on some new cruise control products and other OE integration products that we manufacture. Amazing. So before we get into the nitty gritty, help our audience understand a little bit about what's Rostra's place or perspective within the OEM integration space. Sure. Uh, a lot of people that know the name Rostra, uh, they know that company name because of the cruise control systems that we manufacture. Uh, so if somebody has brought a vehicle to you that does not have cruise control installed on it or wasn't delivered from the factory with cruise control, Rostra has a kit that will allow you to able, en enable that functionality uh, more often than not being completely plug and play. So we've got uh, nice, nice integration harnesses and everything the installer needs to very quickly add some really neat functionality to a vehicle for a customer. All right. So certainly cruise control is kind of like the go to when you think about Rostra, but we're going to cover other topics as well. We are indeed. I'm hoping to uh, give a good primer on some of the uh, camera systems that we manufacture that uh, that go directly into the in dash monitors that come in a lot of today's modern trucks and cars. Now, was I right to assume that we're not only talking about consumer vehicles, are we? Sure, sure. Yeah, no, it's uh, consumer vehicles. And then, of course, uh, a lot of the products that we manufacture these days are, are heavily focused towards fleets and fleet manufacturers. So uh, as, as uh, in conversations you and I have had in the past, we've talked about how it's really nice to install uh, one radio in one truck, but it's really nice to install, you know, 60 cruise controls in 60 different trucks for some fleet customers. I can just see owners of shops salivating on the concept <laughs> of that. Um, I and, you know, we're, who we're speaking today, we're speaking today to independent shops, we're talking to chains, uh, we're talking to, um, you know, those that specialize with dealerships, right? Sure. Uh, these are all or expediters, as we call them. These are all uh, avenues or platforms that these products that we're going to be discussing today through Roster would certainly help your business and, and create a better offering for your customer base. All right. Absolutely. 
So I understand you have a presentation set up for us. And if I know you, Bill, it's probably kind of fancy and we're ready try. for it. I um, so I will get out of your way. We're going to go ahead and set you up to do your presentation. And when we come back, we've got some important topics to kind of dive a little bit deeper into the business of all things OEM um, integration from a roster perspective. So sure, can... sure. Excellent. Let me go ahead and switch over to my presentation here. And uh, Ben, as you mentioned, we've got three primary topics that we want to talk about today. Uh, the first and foremost is some of the latest cruise control additions that we have available through Rostra. Uh, the second, of course, is uh, camera relocation systems that we have when you need to move the camera from the tailgate handle of, uh, of a modern truck. And then uh, third, of course, is going to be the add-on trailer camera systems that we offer. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at that from two different perspectives, uh, one of which is to integrate a camera on a trailer into the OE in-dash monitor in a truck. And then after that, I want to talk a little bit more about the aftermarket side and how you can do practically the same thing with an aftermarket radio, an aftermarket head unit. So with that said, let us go ahead and dive right into the cruise control systems. Now, Ben, the last time you and I talked was almost a year ago to the day when you and I talked about a new uh, uh, pickup truck, but I'll get to that in just one second, I always like to start this conversation talking about cruise control, saying something to the effect of, okay, it's 2022, it's almost 2023. Why exactly are we still talking about cruise control systems for vehicles? And uh, one of the main reasons for that is that uh, cruise control is still not standard equipment from most OE manufacturers, if you didn't know. The second reason is it's an oftentimes overlooked feature uh, when somebody is actually purchasing a vehicle. Uh, oftentimes when you look at a vehicle, you do a short, uh, short trip around town. Uh, you don't really get to take a, a vehicle on a long road trip. So a lot of people don't actually recognize that the uh, vehicle doesn't have cruise control until after they've completed their purchase. And uh, one of the third reasons is uh, it is a popular feature that's actually being decontented and removed from a lot of modern vehicles uh, as manufacturers face uh, restrictions with uh, materials and component shortages. So circling back to what I started talking about there, uh, last August, you and I talked just briefly about a uh, vehicle that Ford was releasing at the time, which was the Ford Maverick. Uh, Ford announced this vehicle in June of 2021, and uh, a couple of months later, in August of 2021, Ford's CEO, Jim Farley, had actually put out an announcement uh, that the company had actually taken reservations for 100,000 of these vehicles in two months. Now, the truck itself fills an interesting niche, if you will, in the marketplace in that there is a hybrid version of it available for less than $20,000. Now, the interesting thing about that is that what you purchase for less than $20,000 is the XL model of the Ford Maverick, which does not come with a cruise control system at all. There is not a package you can add to the XL model, which gets the customer cruise control. So if you want cruise control, you have to step up to the XLT model of this very same truck, which is actually a $4,000 premium. Now, $4,000 gets you a lot of extra stuff, a different interior, flashy wheels, things like that. But for somebody who's not interested in that, $4,000 is a lot of money just for a cruise control system. And so for a to add a roster cruise control system to the vehicle uh, represents basically about 10 times the cost, uh, or, or excuse me, adding that factory is about 10 times the cost of a Rostra cruise control add-on. And when we spoke last time, uh, Rostra had not yet had a chance to get our hands on the truck. But in December, we had a customer that was kind enough to drive down to North Carolina all the way from New Jersey, uh, where they let us use their vehicle for development purposes. And I'm happy to announce that uh, as of December of this past year, what we found out here at Rostra is that the cruise control system that we manufacture for the Ford Ranger and for the Ford Transit Connect uh, is actually a direct add-on to the Ford Maverick as well. So if you have a Ford Maverick and you want to add cruise control functionality to the vehicle, Rostra's part number 2509661 allows you to actually do that. Now, we took this a step further as well. Rostra offers multiple types of, let's just call them acceleration control devices, uh, one of which is cruise control. But we have a cruise control system as well that has speed limiting functionality built into it as well. So in the opening conversation that you and I had, we talked a little bit about consumer vehicles and a little bit about fleet vehicles. And the nice thing about this cruise control system that we have is that it allows a fleet owner to put a speed limiting system on the vehicle at the same time. 
So uh, if a driver wants, they can activate the speed limiter system and the truck itself will not go over that set speed limit. So that's a pretty cool feature to actually have uh, uh, for the fleet owners. Now, beyond the Ford Maverick, uh, another popular utility van that uh, changed platforms for 2022 is, in fact, the 2022 Ram Promaster. Now, for most installers that work inside or outside of these vans, uh, you know that it typically comes very stripped down from the manufacturer. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like that on purpose. Uh, you can add utility shelves and ladder racks and all manner of, of certain things to help the, the average tradesman do their work. Uh, but one of the things, of course, this vehicle is being delivered without is cruise control functionality. So uh, uh, Rostra's tech support team, Thomas, uh, John, and Brian, they took a trip up to a customer's location in Delaware, again, from North Carolina up to Delaware to do the development work on this vehicle. And as of about a month ago, uh, we're pleased to announce that we have a cruise control add-on for the Ram Promaster, which is part number 2509648. So that adds cruise control functionality to this van that did not come with one from the manufacturer. And just like with the Maverick that we talked about a second ago, we also have uh, the cruise control system, which has the speed limiting functionality built into it too for this van. So again, uh, this van, you, you typically won't see a lot of consumers driving this type of van around. It will be uh, fleets and fleet owners. So if they want to have that speed limiting technology built into it, they can do it as well with this system. Now, beyond that, uh, I want to circle back, if I can, to the first slide that I showed, uh, where one of the bullet points that I put down at the bottom is that cruise control is a very popular feature that's actually being removed from these vehicles. And uh, one place uh, we have noticed that more prevalent than any other is with the release of the 2022 Chevrolet Silverado. So a few weeks ago, we traveled a couple of hours west from Rostra's headquarters, and uh, we, we got our hands on the Chevrolet Silverado that you see in this picture right here. Now, if you notice down at the bottom left-hand corner, this Silverado is actually equipped with a push-button start. Now, that is important because that means that the vehicle is also equipped with a smart key device. And this particular vehicle, if you look a little more closely at the picture, you'll also see that it has... Uh, you can't see this in the picture, but it had leather seats that were both heated and cooled for not just the driver, but also the passenger. And of course, uh, if you look a little further up at the top, you'll see buttons for the lane keeping assist, the auto start stop. If you can see the screen there across the top edge, you'll see that the vehicle is actually equipped with navigation as well. So here you are with a $70,000 plus dollar truck that arrived at the dealership without cruise control because components were not available for it. Now, Today's presentation, I'm giving you the exclusive here, Ben. Uh, Roster has actually just released a cruise control system for this vehicle as part number 250-1824. So uh, again, very expensive truck to get without a cruise control functionality built in, but uh, Rostra has a kit available for it. So that wraps up this part of the presentation for uh, some uh, three updates for our cruise control systems. And what I wanna talk about next, if I can, is our tailgate camera relocation systems. And like always, I like to start this conversation. What are tailgate camera relocation systems and why are they necessary? So there's a wide variety of reasons why somebody might need to remove the tailgate from the back of their truck, not just the tailgate, but also maybe the bed altogether at the same time. If you've seen a modern vehicle that has a factory installed backup camera, you know that that camera is actually installed in the tailgate handle. So when you remove the tailgate, you remove your backup camera functionality as well. Now the kits that Rostra offers allow you to add this functionality back to the vehicle onto a piece of equipment that you've installed on the truck when the original camera has been removed. Now here's a few common reasons why you might actually have to remove that bed. First and foremost is adding something like an aftermarket service body. When you're towing a fifth wheel trailer, oftentimes the tailgate is removed altogether to make room for the trailer to go, uh, or the, the gooseneck of the trailer to go in and out of the bed. Adding something like a walk-in uh, back door camper or possibly a slide-in camper shell. Off-road equipment like tire carriers. If you've seen uh, today's modern overland vehicles, they're equipped with tire carriers, uh, 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 gas can uh, carriers that block the, completely obscure the view of the OE backup camera. Or perhaps you've ordered a vehicle that's a cabin chassis model. In the picture here, you see this truck has no bed. It has no bed, so it has no tailgate. With no tailgate, it has no backup camera. So the kits that Rostra offers, we have you covered for practically every vehicle out there going back a good 15 years. 
So how has the technology changed over the past couple of years? In the picture here, down at the bottom left-hand corner, uh, I have a, a picture of a typical connector that a camera video feed would have fed down uh, on an older truck. Uh, this would have been an analog camera that runs at 12 volts. It would have been inside of a connector that would have been anywhere from six to something like this monstrosity on the screen, which is 30 pins. Uh, but nowadays, Manufacturers have moved over to uh, low voltage cameras, uh, LVDS. We commonly just refer to them internally as digital cameras. Uh, these are cameras that operate at a much lower voltage uh, than the older types of cameras did. And the video feed goes down a very small connector. You can see in the picture, it's kind of smaller than your finger, but it's just a single wire that sends that video from the back of the truck all the way up to the front. Now, the interesting thing about these digital cameras is what they actually enable is the 360 degree uh, surround view camera systems that most modern trucks have. Uh, a lot of trucks have four and five different cameras that offer you 14 and 15 different camera views. But one of the interesting things about these camera systems is that when you remove one camera from the, the, the entire system, uh, it basically brings every other camera down at the same time. So with, uh, with these um, uh, 360 degree view camera systems, if you've removed your tailgate, you lose all of your side view cameras, your front view cameras, your cargo view cameras, everything goes down at the same time until you add that camera back into the chain. Now, the problem with that is if you're using a sliding camper or you've got an aftermarket body that's going to be on the vehicle permanently, you need a better way to actually add that camera back into the system. And that's what Rostra offers is a variety of different LVDS camera relocation systems or re-addition systems. Now, we offer these in three different uh, kit types. First and foremost, uh, we manufacture custom housings that allow you to go into your tailgate, pluck the original camera out of it, install it in one of these housings, mount the housing to the back of whatever equipment is on the vehicle, and then plug directly into your factory wiring to get that camera view back, that rear view camera back. Now, uh, that's okay to use if uh, your intention is to add that camera to the original location on the truck. And what I mean by that is in terms of height off the ground and side to side on the truck, left to right, uh, uh, the original location where the tailgate handle was. That's great because you can connect directly to your factory wiring. But if uh, whatever situation arises and you need to actually add that camera somewhere else on the vehicle, maybe up high, down low, further left or right, what have you, what Rostra offers is that exact same camera housing with a uh, five meter extension harness that would allow you to relocate that camera somewhere else on the truck. So again, uh, if you can't connect to that factory wiring because it's too short where you're trying to mount the camera, you can purchase a kit like this. Again, you're taking your original camera out of the tailgate, putting it in the housing, and then you're connecting it to this extension harness to plug back into the camera wiring that's underneath the truck. Now, let's say, for example, you don't want to go through the effort every single time you remove your tailgate to actually pluck that camera out of the tailgate handle. Maybe you break a connector, maybe you strip some screws, something like that. You don't wanna go through that on the OE tailgate. So what we actually offer beyond these two kits that you see on the screen is this kit right here, which includes the housing that we've spoken about, the extension harness that we've talked about, and then an original equipment camera. What this actually allows you to do is permanently mount the camera on whatever equipment is in the back of the truck, and you don't have to mess around with the camera that's inside the tailgate at all. You never have to touch it. And what that kind of looks like right here uh, is, uh, is an installation very similar to this that you have on the screen right now. So what this customer has done is they've installed the uh, Space Cap Diablo uh, slide-in utility body that fits into the back of the bed of a truck. Uh, this particular picture, if I'm not mistaken, is of a Ram 1500 model. And what the customer has done or what the installer has done for the customer is in the left-hand side there, you'll see that they have installed the housing in the camera. They've plugged it directly back into the factory wiring. Uh, and then, of course, the customer once again has their backup camera functionality added back to the vehicle. And to top that off, just to give the analog systems another quick shout out, uh, what you see on the truck here, Ben, this is probably coming up a little sooner for you than it is for me, but uh, you have uh, the um, uh, plow trucks, snow plow trucks with the salt spreaders built into the back. 
when you put that salt spreader in, you lose your tailgate. You lose your tailgate, you lose your backup camera. So what we make is cameras that mount to the back of the salt spreader and plug in directly underneath the vehicle to the factory wiring to allow you to retain that backup camera functionality. So with that said, let's delve quickly into Roster's Trailer Connect line of add-on camera systems for trailers. Now, what is Trailer Connect exactly? Trailer Connect is a series of universal harnesses that allows somebody to add one, two, three, or four cameras to a trailer that they're towing around. The nice thing about that is it really increases visibility on the road and makes backing up a trailer as well as things like changing lanes on the highway just much safer and far more convenient. Now, as I mentioned, we have kits for one, two, three, and four cameras. That's what we see on the screen here. And just a few camera mounting ideas for your cameras. You can see, like I said, the left and right uh, view on a trailer allows you to see what's in the lane beside you as you're driving when you've got those huge blind spots because the trailer's hitched to the truck, as well as a basic backup camera. Whether you want to monitor that camera while you're driving or possibly uh, just use it uh, when you're backing up the trailer, that's going to be there for you once it's installed on the trailer itself. Now, in terms of viewing the video from these cameras, we have a lot of different options, a couple of which include Rostra's 7-inch and nine inch monitors, which can actually allow you to see all the different cameras on the screen at once. But a common request that we get from customers is, I've got a modern truck, I've got this large screen in my dashboard, why can't I just uh, feed that video directly into the dashboard screen? And the short answer is, you can. So what Roster offers, and I've got on the screen here, is a trailer interface kit with an automatic camera switcher that can detect when a trailer is connected to the truck and when it's not. And then a an, uh, T-harness, an OE T-harness, an OE style T-harness that goes directly in line with the factory camera wiring to send the video either from the camera that's on the back of the truck or the camera that's on the back of the trailer. And we'll show a video in just a few minutes of how exactly that works. But as I mentioned, you've got uh, the brains of the operation right here, which is Rostra's 250-8725 automatic camera switcher. Now, this switcher has three different wires coming off of it. The first is uh, an input for the camera that's on the vehicle. This is where the T-harness comes into play. The second is an input for the camera that's on the trailer, whether it's on the back of the trailer or the side of the trailer. And then we have a video output that feeds to the monitor. Again, this is just another harness that connects directly to that T-harness. And there we go. We've got, uh, we've got just a, a, an image here, just a quick image showing one of the many T-harnesses that we manufacture for these vehicles. Uh, these T-harnesses are uh, uh, connect directly to the factory camera wiring that's underneath the vehicle. In this video here, of course, you'll see uh, a connector being plugged in just above the spare tire. So that's your T-harness, that's all it takes to plug that in. And then once the T-harness is connected, uh, the coil cable, as we call it, down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, that's the only thing that the customer actually needs to, uh, to connect, or the only thing they'll ever need to touch again once these components are installed on the vehicle. So just a uh, quick video for you here showing how this system works. The idea behind this is if you've been in a modern vehicle, uh, you back the truck up to the trailer. That's what you see on the screen at the top. You back up until that camera, or excuse me, that trailer comes into full view. And the image that you're seeing is from the factory tailgate handle. Now, once you've actually hitched the truck to, uh, to the trailer, of course, you uh, put it in drive and uh, you drive off. Now, uh, when you're ready to actually back up the trailer, uh, now that the trailer, the coil cable is connected between the two, let's get this video to speed up here. There we go. So once you get the uh, coil cable directly connected between the two, uh, then when you shift the truck into reverse, let's let them finish uh, plugging this coil cable in. Nice thread together weatherproof connector that's on this thing. So now when you shift the truck into reverse, the camera feed that you're going to see is no longer the one that's on the tailgate handle, but rather the one that's on the back of the trailer. So if you're backing down a boat ramp, uh, if you're backing through a parking lot and you need to maneuver your, uh, your trailer between vehicles, 
or you're just backing into a driveway or something like that, you've now got a nice view on the screen from the camera that's on the trailer that happens automatically without any input whatsoever from the driver because when that coil connected is connected to the connector on the truck and the connector on the trailer, the automatic camera switcher senses that and automatically shows you on screen the view from the camera that's actually on the back of the trailer. Now, what if, for example, you have an older vehicle that doesn't have a, a large screen in the dashboard? Somebody might come to your shop and want to have a traditional six or seven or even some of the larger nine and 10 inch uh, head units installed in their vehicle. And with all of these head units for a long, long time, mixed into the wiring, there has always been at least one input uh, for a backup camera. And if you're installing this on a slightly older truck, uh, at the same time, hopefully you're, you're pitching the customer on a backup camera system using one of Rostra's custom tailgate handles that we've got uh, for a variety of different pickup trucks to actually allow uh, backup camera functionality in a nice, clean, integrated handle in the tailgate itself. But while you're pitching the customer on the backup camera, another thing that you need to be asking them at the same time is, do you tow anything with this truck whatsoever? And if the answer to that is yes, the next step that you as the installer, the salesman can take is to actually pitch the customer on the uh, uh, trailer camera system that Rostra offers as well. Because the nice thing about it is when you use the automatic camera switcher and any one of Rostra's heavy duty backup cameras, uh, the same functionality of automatically switching between the backup camera and the camera that's on the back of the trailer can be handled using a kit like this one that you have here on the screen right now. And the nice thing about it is from the customer's perspective, the only thing they ever need to touch again, again, the components that go on the truck are there permanently, um, the components that go on the trailer are there permanently, and all you have to do is use this coil cable right here to connect the two at the same time as you're hitching the truck to the trailer, uh, and the camera switcher will handle everything after that to send the video from the trailer instead of the one that's on the tailgate handle that you just installed on the truck. And then again, once you take this coil cable out of line, uh, it automatically switches the camera view back to the one that's in the tailgate handle. So you can do these kits for aftermarket units like this. You go from your, your typical backup camera to showing the camera that's on the back of the trailer, or you can interface directly with the OE in dash screen uh, that's on the vehicle. And with that said, Ben, I will open it up to any questions that you might have. Well, Bill, that's a rhetorical question because you know I'm going to have questions for you for sure. I'm here for you, man. The first thing I'm going to say, because I wrote it down in bold, is I'm not sure I appreciate that we're already talking about snow plows and salt spreaders. I, I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you, it I mean, <laughs> I kind of hurt right here, man. Like, you got me right here. I was like, jeez, man. Notice, buddy. Yeah, if you didn't notice in that picture, I did pick a vehicle from Ontario. So I did notice that. that. I, I totally had to have something that. with the salt spray and the slush on it. No, but that, but what what I did uh, appreciate about that slide, however, is you know these are ideas I feel that we're not always thinking about. Sure, you know what I mean. Like we're thinking so within the box sometimes that we forget that there are industries, there are opportunities outside of your regular scope of work that if you were aware of it, that you might be able to really tap into something, especially in your community. Sure, right? these are Absolutely. very community kind of based systems and um, resources. Right, such sure. as salt spreaders and so on. Yep. So I'm I, I'm very happy that you brought that up. Okay, um, let's first talk about cruise control. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned how a brand, brand new Silverado, yeah, loaded to the guns, right, crazy. has crazy. everything and doesn't have cruise control. <laughs> I guess the question, the question I wrote down here, Bill, is: Is cruise control, or maybe you don't know, but I I, I think you do, is cruise control a feature that you can go back to the dealership with after taking delivery of the vehicle in a rain check. Is that even an option? The very heartbreaking thing about the answer to that question is it's usually no. Uh, and I would challenge almost anybody that watches this video to call a dealership, tell them you've just purchased a brand new vehicle and you want to add cruise control to it. Uh, I think you'll get one of two answers. They'll either laugh at you and say that, no, we don't do that work here at this dealership. Or if, they'll smart, or if they're smart, they'll know the roster name and can say, no, we can't do it. But uh, there is a company that manufactures kits for it. So you hear about rain checks for things like seat heaters and some LED lighting and things like that, where the microcontrollers are just not available right now. 
but you don't hear about it at all with cruise control devices. Well, based on that answer, this is an incredible opportunity for 12 volt specialty guys to jump on. You know, uh, you know, there's always two sides of a coin. And sure. although these last two years have been, let's say, challenging on many levels, there are some fruits that have come from the scenario. And this is one of them. Um, yes. These are obviously customers who just spent big money on big vehicles. Uh, doesn't matter what number you throw at them. They'll probably say yes, because yep. they're so used to having this feature. Excuse me. That if they knew, again, awareness is key. If they knew that there was a solution, then that's your job, Mr. Dealer, Mrs. Dealer, to let them know and make them aware of such opportunities and features, they will want it. So yes. very interesting. Can't get a rain check. Get in front of that customer and tell them that you can take and, care of that. For and them. you can keep in mind that if a dealership has one of them, they're going to have a lot more as well. So, so maybe the key is to communicate with the dealership. I mean, even if you're not into that, you know, type of expediter work, this is one sure. of those things. I mean, if you're already dealing with them, mention it. Yeah, get Absolutely. your foot in the door. And from the installer perspective, most of these cruise controls, they take less than an hour to uh, to to put yeah. on. I, I wanted to mention, you know, we have a lot of different levels of, of technicians that watch CMA. Um, if I had to grade one being simple, 10 being master guru level, I would say this is like a two. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've worked really hard to get the, you know, proper connectors for it. So you plug right into the vehicle uh, and, and off the, oops, my camera has gone out. Give me one second there. To yeah, switch no, right back we on. still hear you though. I got you. So yeah, that, uh, there we go. We, we've gotten it to the point where, uh, you know, all you really need is just a, a basic power and a ground connection and you're ready to go with a cruise control system. All right. Yeah. Now there's another concern while you were talking about this, I'm like cruise control. So if I was a customer, I just dropped, 70 large on the, on the truck. I'm pissed mm -hmm. that I don't have cruise control. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. do I do? I start Googling. I yeah. start Amazon, Amazoning, right? Yeah. And, I, and so I did it. Actually, while you were presenting, I actually went and checked. <laughs> so there are some, uh, what's the word I'm going to use here? Sketchy? Yeah. DIY kind of cruise control kits from brands I've never heard of before sure. um, that yeah. just come in a Ziploc bag kind of situation. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that for a second. That's, that's probably a real challenge for sure in this particular category. Yeah, sure. So uh, one thing you have to keep in mind, of course, is that uh, uh, the roster systems are manufactured uh, right here in the United States. Uh, certainly we use components from all over the world, um, but you have eyeballs and hands uh, uh, packaging these things right here in the United States. Uh, so they're going to ship directly to you uh, right from the box headquarters, basically. Yeah. yeah. What about liability, man? This is like you're playing with like, sure. these are vehicles. When do you use cruise control? Not when you're going 20 mile. You know what sure, I mean? No, like, yeah. By and large, of course, like you mentioned, it is going to yeah. be at highway speeds and things like that. Um, one thing you have to keep in mind is the sheer amount of testing that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, we have customers come from all over the country to allow us to do development work on their vehicles. And if we ha don't have access to a vehicle, like I mentioned, our tech support guys, they hop in the company van and they go, uh, you know, two, three states away to find a vehicle so that they can actually do the development work. So yeah, all that's uh, all the development work, all of the manufacturing and packaging, all of that stuff's happening right here. And with cruise control systems, you have to keep in mind that the consumer has the same amount of protections with an add-on cruise control system as they do with somebody adding a radio to a vehicle. Um, the liability, if you will, is, is no different whatsoever. The consumer's got all the same protections where um, if something goes wrong with the vehicle, the dealership can't just tell you, oh, you've got this aftermarket piece on it. We, we, can't, uh, we can't fix this problem. Or you're going to have to come out of pocket thousands of dollars to fix this problem just because we saw this aftermarket piece. Uh, so the, the cruise control systems and, and pretty much uh, any other product out there, uh, they, they've got protections for the consumers. My goal was to uh, uh, provide more bullets in the chamber, if you will, for dealers when it facing a customer coming in. So, yeah, but I can get this piece and I can put it in. Well, you can, but you really can't. You know, let me sure. tell you why. And then everything we just talked about with the design, the testing, sure. the manufacturing. Yeah. These, you know, the, the cruise controls, the cruise controls themselves, of course, communicate with the vehicle directly over the CAN bus. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's something that the DIY customer, I would go so far as to say probably shouldn't do. Um, you know, if, if I think you're going to see the, the same number of customers that were going to try the installation themselves first uh, do exactly what you said. They're going to go to the Amazons and the Ebays of the world, and uh, they're going to try and get a cruise control for as inexpensively as possible. And then maybe they'll show up at your shop a few weeks later uh, uh, complaining that it doesn't work. What uh, I would definitely uh, strongly recommend yeah. is do not install those. Yeah. <laughs> do yeah. not install those. That's yeah. what I have. 
again, we've uh, we've have uh, you know um, gotten it to the point. We've worked really hard to to make sure that we've got the nice connectors that connect directly to the vehicle's accelerator pedal, and we've gotten it down to the point where, uh, like I mentioned, you just need a good ignition and power ground connection. Well, at the end of the day, Rostra does this stuff for the manufacturer. Like yeah. there's so much OE manufacturing going on, you cannot have a better source of yeah, in engineering than this. There's so much history. I mean, Rostra has been doing cruise control systems for the better part of 60 years at this point under one go. name or another. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's, let's quickly shift to the latter part of your presentation. We're talking about cameras. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just dive in. I want to talk about the features and the benefits, but there's one scenario that kept on playing in my head as you were presenting. I was like, so you take off this camera that came original on the vehicle. Yes. Let's say you replace it with one of these cabs, these boxes that you showed, right? Yes. There's got to be some type of liability concern from an insurance perspective. There's got there's something there, and yeah. I think that needs to be addressed. One hundred percent. So what you're probably alluding to is what's commonly referred to as FMVSS one eleven. Uh, FMVSS 111, Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 111, uh, is uh, a, a federal regulation that uh, the building blocks for which probably got put into place about a decade or so. But uh, FMVSS 111 uh, dictates uh, backup camera systems on vehicles and the uh, size of monitors that uh, need to be in the cab for the driver to see. So this is on vehicles that weigh less than 10,000 pounds. And the regulation itself uh, went into place saying that all new vehicles starting in 2018 had to have a factory backup camera uh, from the factory. So that had to be on the vehicle when it was delivered to the dealer. Now, for most of your sedans and coupes and SUVs and things like that, th that's fine. That, uh, you know, nobody's ever going to do anything to move those cameras or, or obstruct them in any way. But with pickup trucks, uh, light duty, heavy duty pickup trucks, uh, obviously there's a whole range of accessories you can add to the back of it, which could necessitate the, uh, the removal of the tailgate itself. So, you know, the interesting perspective on this is, it's a federal regulation that says that the truck has to be equipped with a backup camera. Uh, if, for example, you as the fleet owner have removed that federally regulated safety feature and then you have a driver back into a car or, God forbid, mm -hmm. hit a, a person exactly or something where I'm getting like at. That, and your insurance company comes to you and says, this vehicle had a backup camera on it. Uh, why doesn't it have a backup camera on it right now? And you say, oh, yeah, we just we just took off this federally regulated safety mm. feature. What is the what is the insurance company going to say to you or how is that going to affect your coverage as the fleet owner? Um, I can't help but think it wouldn't be good. Uh, but, yeah, so that's that's one thing to definitely keep in mind when you're removing this backup camera functionality. Uh, you really have to do uh, you really do have to think about uh, the, the safety consequences that come from doing so. So let's review that again. So you're in a situation we've now removed the factory camera. Yeah. The wiring is still there. Obviously, yeah. still connected to the screen yep. that's in the vehicle. Yep. You've placed it with, let's call it that box, a box. Sure. Okay? sure. Um, you have a solution to retain the original camera, but yes. simply remotely reinstall it. Yes. So you can retain the original camera remotely installing it somewhere else or with some of these vehicles where Rostra doesn't offer one of those ABS plastic housings to do that. We offer a complete replacement camera that can surface mount to pretty much any surface on the back of, like you said, whatever it is, a tire carrier, utility body, something like that. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So yeah. Th it's almost like a universal solution that you should have just ready to go. You know, you have a customer come in, he's sure. a plumber, he's got a box in the back. You're like, uh, I noticed while we were fixing A, uh, yeah. we did the tour and we, you don't have your backup camera. Sure. Oh, yeah, I had to take that off because of the yeah. box. Sir, were you aware that you probably don't want to do that? Really? Yeah. So for Again, the 20, yeah, for the 2018 and newer vehicles, say, mm -hmm. okay, we really need to add that back and we've got the solution for you. But for some of the older vehicles that didn't have it in the first place, mm -hmm. you've also got the solution there with the, oh, with the great, universal yeah. cameras. Yeah. Absolute update. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's now talk about the switching system. Sure. So the last time you brought this on, I was like, wow, this is like, that cat's meow. This is amazing. Yeah. But what I love about this is, you know, we got a lot of car audio dealers that tune in. So, mm -hmm. you know, you guys are always putting in, you know, screens, uh, source units. Every source unit on the market at this point has a video in. Sure. A standard mm -hmm. RCA video in. And then I notice that system does have a standard RCA video it does style. Indeed. It does indeed, yep. Um, so whether you're tapping into the OE system, 
with the T harness, as Bill mentioned, or you're using a aftermarket source unit with a video in. Mm -hmm. Man, rule number one, this is going to get into the last part of our discussion, which is the business side of things. You, you see a pickup roll up. If you are not walking around the vehicle with the customer and you notice a hitch is already installed, regardless if there's something behind it, if the because I know myself, my, my hitch never comes out. Why? Yeah. Because every weekend I'm towing something. So what's the point? Yeah. Yes, I hit my shin on it all the time. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because I'd rather hit my shin than have to bend over, get dirty, and take out that hitch every time. Sure. So having said that, you, uh, Mr. S Mrs. Salesperson, do the tour with the customer and you see a hitch. First question, oh, what is it that you're towing? I noticed you mentioned that in your presentation. Mm -hmm. That conversation, that one lead-in can lead to so much opportunity. Yes, Today, indeed. we're having, talking about you know, Rostra. Obviously, there's car op or there's audio opportunities. Yes. There's a security opportunities. There's, it's endless, right? Yeah. But for the, today's specific conversation, if that person is towing something by the presence of a hitch, you owe it to that person to at least tell them about the backup camera. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that for me, it's like, I, I, yeah. Anybody yeah. who's watching this who tows toys knows, yeah, how many times you wish you had a camera behind yeah. the toy or trailer. Yeah, we we you know we talk a lot about about uh, a lot about the trucks themselves, but uh, mm -hmm. obviously for these sedans and things like that, where you're adding these aftermarket uh, in dash screens too, uh, some of these people with smaller cars tow as well. Maybe they're just a weekend warrior and they've got a small open air. Yeah, trailer. these mid size they, SUVs with yeah. V6s, they tow a lot too. SUVs and then even I, I mean I've got a small four cylinder hatchback that I uh, go to the hardware store on the weekends and get some sheetrock and things like that too mm -hmm. and I've sure. got a trailer hitch and I've got a backup camera and just as easily I could put a camera on the back of that trailer and feed it into the aftermarket unit that I've got in my dashboard so, so yeah it's, it's not just the trucks if, if you if you see a hitch on anything uh, like you said, Ben, you have to ask, what are you towing? Uh, you want to add a camera to your trailer as well that you can see I, it in the screen I automatically. I promise our audience, you get yeah. one of these installed on your customers, yes. they'll never go without they, it again. They will love you. Absolutely. I can promise. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the camera is weather resistant, weatherproof for the elements. Sure. It's not yes. lighting. Yes. Or does it have lighting? Uh, some of them, uh, some of them have LED lighting. Most of them are equipped with infrared LED lighting, infrared. so that they can have that "quote unquote" night vision. Yeah. So does and that then, mean it's always on whenever you? Whenever no. So you it actually. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. You're asking me about the LEDs or the camera itself? I, uh, the camera itself, the okay. one that goes yeah, in the so back of the tray. Oftentimes, you'll give the camera ignition power so that it's ready to go right when you know right when you need it. Um, but uh, also the infrared LEDs, uh, of course, there's a photo sensor built into the camera uh, uh -huh. that actually allows that to come on and off during low light settings as needed. Uh, and then another cool thing to think about, Ben, is uh, some of these cameras that we offer actually have microphones built into them as well. So you've, you've got the visibility aspect of backing up the trailer using the camera. But if there's another reason that you need a, another person back at the back of the vehicle uh, guiding you or telling you go this way or that way, they can literally talk right to the camera that's on the on the trailer and you can hear the audio in the cab. So it carries the, the trailer systems that we have don't just carry a video feed. Uh, they carry one uh, audio feed as well. So you've got, uh, you know, you can hear uh, uh, verbal instructions or maybe somebody yelling at you or something like that uh, in the cab, too. I'll tell you, for those that are, are towing 30 foot plus camper trailers, you know, when you're getting into those tight spots. Oh, yeah. that I mean, right now, what's the solution? Yell yeah. or uh, walkie talkies. Right. Wave that's a, that's a, yeah. uh, <laughs> this kind of solves all of that. That's very yes, interesting. I didn't even know about that feature. Yes, okay. It does. Yep. Um, I mean, I think we did the round. I mean, I, I, you, as you can see from my enthusiasm, this is a product. Is, is it, you know, does this put base in your trunk? No, it doesn't. Will this open up sales and give your customers, you know, A, safer options, yeah. uh, B, more convenient options and, and more potential business for your shop? 150%. And, so, and Ben, as, as with most of these safety features, whether we're talking about camera systems or we're talking about parking sensors and things like that, you know, not hitting a vehicle pays for itself one time. You know, you, you put this on the vehicle and, uh, you know, if you were to hit a vehicle, uh, you would, uh, you know, you'd be paying out pretty penny for that. But uh, what you pay for these systems uh, kind of oftentimes uh, uh, beats what that would cost you hitting, absolutely. hitting another vehicle or hitting a person or something like that. Yeah. Last thing before I let you go, let's review again. Three new applications that you just launched on the show today. What are they again? That's the Ford Maverick, 2022 Ford Maverick. That's the 2022 Ram ProMaster Utility Van. And then the 2022 Chevrolet Silverado with push-button start. 
Uh, we've already had a cruise control for the 2022 Chevrolet Silverado, but the push button start one again is the upper trim level, uh, which for some reason they're being delivered without cruise control. <laughs> so you got a customer at the top of the line Silverado coming out right now? Just say book him the time. He needs cruise yeah. control. That's might it. as well. Might as well. Uh, listen, if you're interested in more information on Rostra products, like Bill has been talking about all session long, go ahead and check out their website. It's rostra.com. We're going to go up and pull up um, the website for you so you guys can write that down or you can freeze frame it or whatever you need to do. So rostra.com, all the way up to date. Great tool on there, by the way, Bill. Just put in your vehicle, the make, the model, and literally everything they make, and then some, right? And then some. So Vox yep. stuff slid in there. I see yep. some Gentech stuff in there as well. That'll yep. all pop up to give you ideas of what you can do for that vehicle. Yes, uh, and if you're interested in, and if you're uh, just, you know, a retailer, you might want to be a dealer. Well, get a hold of the folks at Vox Electronics. VoxElectronics.com. Contact them, and they will put you through the right route such that you can get your hands on this stuff. Yes. Bill, that was a good one, man. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate you having me. I'll see you on the next one, and uh, looking forward to that when we meet again. Sounds good. Thanks, Ben. Take care, Bill. Right, Bye-bye. All right. That was uh, Bill Simmons, William Simmons, formerly. Director of Marketing over at at uh, Vox Electronics and quite the specialist when it comes to Rostra as well. All right. Uh, great contest going on right now. It's almost to an end. I'm not going to say this many more times, so you better get over there to our Facebook page because we're partnered up with Kenwood as they're giving you an opportunity to win a dual camera motorsports cam. Really fun unit here. That's great for your motorcycle, your ATV, UTV, whatever it is that you ride. Really cool device. All you got to do is uh, like our page, like JV, uh, JVC Kenwood Canada's page, and share the post. And uh, you might be the lucky winner. Um, also, while you're on the website, check out cmanetworks.com, of course. If you like this video and many more, we've got a couple that we've done more with Bill. Or check out the uh, Vox Electronics playlist. Got every single brand covered with videos to make sure you're fully up to date on what's going on and what's offered in the market. That's it for this CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. Thanks for hanging with us. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Stop it. Yeah, I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's laugh on the radio. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's laugh out loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?